Uh, what we did so far, we talked about databases, we talked about Python, and then I said the course, in fact, it's starting when we start Django. And the first things we did is the routing structure of Django. Then we talked about models. It's where we write how to create a table, or tables more correct, and the link between them. Then we talked about templates, which is the representations layer it's in any other in any other framework or you know in computer science it's considered as the views part. We have three parts. Uh, let me add it one more time. In fact, we wrote it once. We already have the what we call view. Then we have logical layer. And then we have the data data layer. The view in Django, it's the template. The logical layer, it's a little confusing really, first time you see it, but you get used to it. The logical layer, in fact, it's called views in, in Django. Okay? And uh, eventually the data layers we put in the models. Just a little to organize the way it is. This is in Django, the second one. That's the first one, okay? Then after we looked at all of those, we saw a little bit about view. We went back to talk a little bit about templates and we mentioned the HTML. We mentioned the CSS a little bit. Styles has really been up to the CSS and a little bit about the language called Jinja. All those help us to really utilize the templates. Later on in more advanced section of this course, we'll talk about JavaScript as a language. And then there is a mechanism which is really built on JavaScript it's called jQuery. Those help you to extend even further the capabilities of using template in Django, okay? Later on, I will mention there is also a whole framework called REST framework, which is shared by a lot of other frameworks. Even in Microsoft, they start using it and a lot of other Java and all of them. The idea in REST is to isolate all together in between the logical layer and the, and the presentation layer. We won't get into that here. It's really nice when you don't know who is going to be your user or when you want to open your platform to someone else altogether that just needs a way to connect to your platform and use his own presentation layer, okay? But that's what we will leave to more advanced sessions during the course. Okay, I would like to go today and review quickly on the templates. And then I want to start combining all of them and creating something today. Okay, creating some functioning page from scratch. We started, in fact, last time, we'll continue today. So let's go ahead. Let's just uh, look again and and review what we did the last time. Last time we said that it's a good practice when you have a project of a Django, you have a project and under the project, you put the applications and under the application, you can have several applications. And then we said it's good practice to have one template. This is for the whole project, the traits. You see here, we have templates and under these templates, I'll put the base template. This one is really is the true HTML. It start with HTML, finish with HTML, and in the middle of it, we build up blocks, okay? 
Last time we looked even on the simple one, the title. See, this is a lot of stuff we learned them as we go along. Okay, stuff that should be in the header, but we built up a, a little block, we called it a title. We said in HTML, the title in fact dictate what will be, this, this is really the HTML, yeah? This is the HTML. This one is a block we're creating to facilitate changing the title based on which page we are. So this one will put in the hand, if this page were to open and nobody would change what happened, what written inside, what will happen is when we have a, 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 a little folder here, it will say base here. Okay, so whatever we're writing here in the title, you will show. So let's follow up. And then we said in the good practices, we start with a base under the templates and then inside each template, here we had the main, we had the to do, and we added our own Django uh, DB links, okay, DB links. And we said it's a good practice we're having another template and then inside it to make a base for this specific application. Same way we do it for the main. The main has templates and under that one we make a one. This one, each one of them will inherit or will extend, I should say, more correct, it's I will extend the base. So if I double click, I have the base on the top. And then from this one, we're changing the blocks of the base template. So here we have a title, general title. But the truth of the matter, this one will not be showing to any one of the templates in the base, in the debility. Why? Because we extending the base and we're replacing the title block and we're telling him change it please to billings app so what it will show on the top now a billing apps this is will override this section some things is apply for any other element that we override let's look another one okay let's say an oh here we go we have a toolbar the app toolbar you see that this is overriding what is inside here. So let's go and look at that. We have all these, the header, the head, we talked about the head. This is really the only one things for now. Important, later on we talk about what all those ones do. Very important, but for no, not for now. Then in the body, we have, let's look at the sections that we have. Oh, here we go. We have another two blocks it's totally empty here. So when I'm replacing this empty one with the one here, it will put this text as if it was inside here. And what does it mean to put it inside here? Just for demonstration, I'll just put it there and then you'll see what it means. Now that we know a little bit about about HTML, or what it says, put a list. This is unordered, okay? Unordered, it means we'll put a dot, but there's a lot of those stylings. We talk about them some other time that belongs to Bootstrap, another, a, another package we use, and I haven't mentioned that yet. We will talk about it later on. But for now, it just makes it look nicer. But the key point is it makes a list. Make a list of links. A is a link. So I will have one, two links. I don't want to put it here. I do want to put it in the right place. And those are the links only for the application, the billings. That's why I put it here. So this one, when I open a page, that will extend the best deep billings, that deep billings, first of all, will overcome, uh, overwrite this empty block and put those three lines in here. And we'll play with it in a second, 
okay then when we have a base for this application naturally will be that all those ones should really inherit or extend this one so let's say the emos is going to emos oh emos we didn't do that so what we can do replace this one by the way let's see let's see how it looks like and see how we finally have a control on the whole process. Let's go into, I'm logged in already. I go into the billings. Okay, remember we didn't really the billings. I didn't open yet a, a route to that. It's a just a test. And I want to go into the Amos page. So what we learned Last time, we have the URLs here. To get to the Amos, I need to write Amos after the billings. The billings, we learned that from these URLs. We got to the, the billings. That's the, the billings. When I write the billings, it will take me to these URLs. From these URLs, I will go to the dbillings URL and the dbillings when it's empty it will go to the index but when it, I will write emos after that it will take me to the emos one so let's do it we did it before we did it one more time emos that will take me to this page oh this page we did it from scratch just for testing so now we want to make it not to be like by itself we would like the framework the whole framework to be there so how will we do it and a really nice and excellent way to extend it it's just by simply going to the emos and instead of just starting the whole web page from scratch here we go i will remove all of those stuff I won't need it. I want to go and extend. And if you, you see, it's like going here. Let's copy those two first. Go to the Amos and I'll put it here. Now, instead of extend it's from base, we want to extend it from base, the billings. This way, my starting point it's really this one so i will automatically will have the the toolbar but in addition i would like to put something in the body this one if you see this block okay if you this is empty here in the base it's embedded right in here it's right going here it says Welcome to the thread of projects, but I don't want it to say that. I want it to give me something else. I want it to give me this text. So I'm going to take this text and put it inside this block. So I can copy this block, which is empty here. I'll go to Amos, put it here. And in fact, the end of it, I put in the end. All of this one will be now part of the body of the main base HTML. This is the HTML that I'm always seeing. It was it, it says only welcome to the trade projects, but the best the billings override it and empty it up. And now what we're asking them to do in Amos is really put this text inside okay so let's see what we see now let's go back to here let's go here and type emus again now let's see what we see oh nice you see we got the whole framework and this one become to be inside the body section of the whole main template that's pretty cool okay a big jump
on okay now it's make life easy also in programming i want to put a title here we know a little bit about h1 okay we'll see this is the emos page in the buildings app is that right that's pretty cool let's go again let's see it refresh that's exactly what we're getting it's writing it now moreover here it says something maybe i don't really want that one let me close some stuff here and here it's a billings app i don't want it to say billing apps by the way it says billing apps because in the best billings we wrote billings app but i want to override it for this specific page so i can if this is overriding what it's inside the base okay inside the base this section I can override it. So this one is overriding what it's inside. In the emos, I can override it. So here we go. In fact, I don't really want it to say, I didn't override it, I just copied it. Let's write emos here. Now in the title, it will say emos. Refresh. Here we go. I have emo. That's pretty cool. What it makes also, not only, that gives me a lot of power. It's also helped me that eventually I don't really care anymore about the whole framework. I only focused on the specific page that I'm working on. It makes work very much nicer and easier. Let's go modify slightly this part. This one is really the section that we override. In fact, this part, the log off, it's in all the applications. It was in the base. This one, it's really inside the inside the application base the billings. So let's look and do order a little bit in all the applications. That would be a really nice uh, review, and then we can move on. Let's look at this one. When I'm in the base in the deep billings application, I would like to go to the main, and I would like to go to the to do. Let's just check now that we know we can write it nicer. This one will be the to do app. That's nice. Now, when I am in the main application, let's go to the main application now. Let's go to the best one. When I'm in the main, I want a link to the to do, and I would like a link also to the, the, the billings, to the billings program. Is that right? So here I would go to the to do, and this one I wanted to go to the billing, but here I have a problem. I don't know how do I tell him, please go to the main page of the billings program. But I have a hint, this one tells him, go to the to do main page in the to do application. So first of all, it's good, I need to when I'm in a man, but I don't really know what that one means. And in a second, I'll go and I'll get back to it. Okay. Okay. So this one, let me close this one because this is just only a page inside. We're focusing now on those base one. Let's open the other one in the to do. When we are in the to do application, the logic says that I would like the man and the billings to be there. Oh, here we go. Here, in fact, I gave it to you. Okay, I gave you already the answer and I'm gonna explain it. That's really it. So in fact, I can really copy this line. If I already know it, I can go to the main and just replace this one with this one and we'll do the same work. I still owe you to explain you how that works. In a second, I will do it, okay? I'll do it in a second, but let's go back here. Refresh the whole things. And here it's nice, first of all, you see, they have to do hey why do i have the app here hey, let me go back here app let's go to the main here we go this is the main in fact okay i have to do and i have billings let's click on billings billings 
Uh, it gives me, which page does it give me? It gives me the Amos page. Do I want the Amos page? I don't think so. So something is walking wrong. I will fix it in a second. If I go to the main, and I don't want it to go to the to-do, uh, I think I have a hint. Let's see. Let's go back and do all I organize it in the way it should be. First of all, when I am in the main, I do want to go to the to-do, and I want to go to the billings, and here is the way we organize it. This is part of the Jinja language. It's allowed me to tell the Django framework. When somebody clicks on this link, the name of the link is billings. This is the A, it's a link. The name will be billings. But when somebody clicks, I want you to go to a URL. But this is, doesn't look like a URL. And how does it work in Django? I will put a URL in this kind of a special bracket and the rest the percentage sign. I'll write the URL and then this is important. I write the name of the application and the name of a URL in the URLs file. I will repeat. This is the name of the application and this will be the name of the URL of a functions in this application. What do I mean by that? Let's go back to the dbillings application. We have this URL file. Here we have a list. And see, it's interestingly, I put a, I made a mistake, you see? I just discovered it. I put the name index twice, so I almost made a mistake. I would like to change it to Amos. So how the logic works? If I put in the parentheses, I think we were here. If I put to do, uh, what were we? I think we were here. If I put deep billings, that means go to the deep billings application, to the URLs of the billings application, and find one of those rows, find the rows this time by the name. I have an index, I have Amos. So I'm asking him, go and find this one. And when you find this one, you tell me the, the URL, which is empty here, and another word, it will be just the billings. So if we look at this one, this one means show me the deep billings. Let's do this as an exercise. It would be really cool to see it. Okay, I'm gonna copy this part. Okay, and I'm gonna just for fun, we will uh, we'll, uh, put it right in here just for fun. Let's see if we will see what I just wrote. This should give me a string, really. So let's put here a div. It shouldn't really, it will make a mess, but that's fine. But at least you see what it is. What does it do? Okay, let's run it for a second. So here this time he's gonna to go to the billings application and he's going to go to the route uh, which the name of it is index. And that one is according to the URLs, it's this one. This one, it says index. And it means I'll replace it to Amazon and see how we will change it. This one, it will build the, the routing. Here, it's really empty here, but you have one before it. Before it gets to this file, it gets to the main URLs, and there it's, it will look for the billings. So let's run it, see what we see. If it doesn't come out, I will put it in another place, okay? And let's go to the main. Oh, here we go, you see that? This is the garbage that I put here. You see it says deep billings. This is really the only thing that comes right after the main page. Like if you take this one, if you take this one, it's exactly what we asked. You can think about it, that what I just did here, the mess I did here, what I wrote here, what this one says, it's slash dbilling slash. And that's really what means, let's just try that. 
I will erase everything inside here and just type that right there. What this function does, it basically tells me, tell the template, please put in there slash dbillings slash. And you will see, this is takes me to the dbillings really. Refresh it. I erase that from here. Oh, we really are. Let's go into, let's refresh. I'm in the main. Let's click the billings. And you see, it put really this one here. Another way you can see that that's really what it does. If you put your mouse here, okay, you can see on, look at the bottom left here. It will tell you what is under the link. When I put it here, it shows me the IP address and the billings. Let me erase this one. This time I want it when I go to here, I don't want that one, I want him to say Amos. So if I put here Amos, it will go really the Amos. It doesn't really care what you write here. It will just go to Amos. So let's see now one more time. Fresh. And when I put the mouse, it will say Amos in the bottom. When I click, it went to the Amos, but it doesn't know what Amos is. So this is really wrong. So let's do it another way. That's a little bit total confusion if I will do it manually. So that's why Django had done something really brilliant. He said, don't try to figure out all the path. I'll give you something that will help you. You want to go to the function says Amos, just simply put Amos here. And I think here we wanted the billings, is that right? Now we will go to the application DB links. It will look for the name Amos. So if I go here, it will go to Amos. Or oh, Amos, I have to add to the DB links Amos, not just Amos. Now let's see, it will do it automatically for me. Refresh this one. Let's put the mouse first. You see in the bottom, it did it automatically. It put the billings, Amos, when I click, it will take me to that page. That's pretty cool. So it's really saved a hell of a lot of time in designing a, a web page, sophisticated one. This is really more advanced, little it gives you the power of uh, Django in helping you to write pages. So I don't really need Amos here, I want index because I want to go to the, I want to go to the index. So let's go back again and make sure we made everything in order. So when I'm in the main, I would like to go to those two applications. So this is good. When I'm in billings applications, I want to be able to go to the to-do and to the main. So I make sure it has to do the index, main has a home, that's perfect. When I am in the, when I'm in the to-do application, I would like to go to the main, that's pretty cool. And I want to go to the, that everything is cool. So I have the whole navigations, doesn't matter which application I will be in, it will be navigating to the right place. That's why it's so important to have a section like that in the main template, and then we extend it based on which application inside the projects we are. Then we have this part which allow us to extend even further the menu based on the page that I'm in, okay? Here, I didn't really extend anything. Here, I didn't extend anything. Billings, I didn't extend anything. But we'll take an example later on. I will see how we do that, okay? For now, we didn't do anything, but we'll do it later on. Nice. Now, let's see. Uh, by the way, I will open. I always like to give a real application. This is really more the machine learning based on this framework. And you will see the same logic applied here too. We have, a, here we have a special application called core, which we pulled a core function in Python to help us to do machine learning algorithms. But we have another application called introductions to machine learning. We have also the main. And if you see, it's very similar structure. In the main, I have the URL. The URL has a lot of other things. 
we don't really care for now. But we do have also the empty one. We have a home, and that's the home. Then if we go and look at the templates, we have the basement, very similar, if you notice. And we have only one thing, additional, extending the base. I have the main, OK? And in the main, I have also introductions to I have only the title man, and the only things I have only one application I'm referring to, which is introductions to machine learning. After I go to the machine learning, let's look at that. There's a really cool one. Yeah, I would have two in 8,000 stack. I should have put a port. One more time, I'll put 8,005. I'm using the 8,000 for our own trades. That will open a second server. And there are different. See, this one has additional libraries open up automatically as you open the application. And I go into the link here. By the way, this is the application. This one, I'm in the main now. Okay, I do a login. Uh, I log in, and now if you see, I have intro to machine learning, no surprise, because this one, it's right in here. This is exactly what this block is doing, according to the logic we talked about. Now when I dive in, when I click on it, I'm going to a different application. Oh, here I have a long menu. Let's find it out. Where do I find it? Okay. By the way, you see it says intro here. You automatically put the intro for me. So let's see if we can find it in this application. So basically it takes me to the intro application. Let's find intro to machine learning. Here it is. I have templates and here I have a base. But first of all, let's go to the base. Oh, here we go. This one, okay, I have an applications and I have, it goes to the main. Is that right? This one goes to the main. So let's see if this one, I can find this one. Okay. So this one links me to the main. So here we go. Oh, here it is, main. Everybody sees that? Do you see that? This is really the main here is coming from this section. But what does it come, all of those ones? I don't see them. This is the part that this specific page brings those along. So let's find them. If you see in the base, I'm getting this one, okay? And if I go into the intro here, let's go to the intro and let's go to the index. I do double click on the index. Oh, this time is interesting. Look at this block. This block has to do with the main page of the introductions to machine learning. So I open one for chapter one, chapter two, all of those, they have to do with the main page of the introductions to machine learning. So I can even break it to some few sections if I want, okay? Uh, but those one here, here, here we see chapter one, chapter two, etc., and all of them have a link. So if I were to ask, let's say it was an exam, what that one will take me? Now we should know. Anybody want to help? Liam or Hanoch? What do you think? How do I know where does it take me to, based on what I said before? Chapter three. So, exactly. But which application, Liam, which application? The intro. The intro to machine learning, exactly right. So let's go to the application. Intro to machine learning, here it is. And there, if I go to the navigator, here is the URL. Let's open it up. That's what it tells me the first part. Then go and look for the name chapter three. So let's go here. Where is chapter three? Here it is. It gets to here. In fact, no surprise, look at the, what it says here. I just to make it simple, you put the same name, but it's convention. It's as you feel comfortable. I usually put the same name. 
So if I go here and click on chapter three, see what will happen. Why he doesn't like me? Here we go. I click chapter three. He, he added the chapter three on top of the intro, which make a lot of sense. So let's go back again. Okay. If I want to go to chapter three and I want to get to chapter three, then when I click in here, it will put, if you see on the bottom left of the screen, it says intro slash chapter th zero three slash. And when I go, I put the mouse on chapter two, we'll go chapter two, etc. This is exactly the logic we implemented here. Going to eat each one of those chapters, it's basically navigating to that route. Later on, what does the real work is really the function. All of the function, which I will talk about it later on as an example, okay? This is really not machine learning, what I'm showing here. It's why we need the other course to organize my machine learning studies in a nice way. But this is software engineering. It's not machine learning. It's implemented inside the code, which will make our life much easier in a second. I will demonstrate. But let's go back here again. My index, I have all of those one. And each one in the index will take me to the right chapter. It simply will go to the application intro and it will go to the name of the URL called, in this case, it's chapter three. This one will be chapter one. And the way we'll do it, after I will click this button, it will go to this application intro, it will go to the URL, it will find the right chapter, depending on which one I clicked. If I click chapter two, it will go here. When it gets here, it will go to this function. This is where we start the machine learning. This is where we start any type of application. And we'll see it in a billing application that we'll start today. If I do control B, which takes me, here is the function. This one, I call it a routing function because it really doesn't do anything. And it's a very sophisticated routing mechanism. The only things it does, here it just showed me a, a page, okay? So this is a routing which doesn't really do much. There is more sophisticated one. If we go into the URLs and we look at, let's say, for example, I will go, this is really a sophisticated function. This is a true routing. This one is just for demonstration purposes, but, and doesn't really do much. This is a very sophisticated router. If I do control B, go to this function, that's a very sophisticated. We will learn it when we get to the topic of JavaScript and we talk how that does. It's much more sophisticated than the way we learn. In fact, he internally, he knows how to send two variables and based on those two variables, it will navigate to the right page. So if I have a chapter, I have a page and based on the chapter and the page, he will know to which chapter to go. He will check if the chapter is chapter two, then go call this function and transfer the page. And this function, it's where the hard work is done in machine learning. So then it will check which page do you want me to render? Oh, if I want only to get data, and now you will see a true logical layer. This is looks naive one, but the truth of the matter, if you have a good eye, you will see all of those ones, we start with an object called algo2. It's an algorithm, it's an object in Python that help to run algorithms. And the first thing I tell the algorithm, I create an object. Remember, we learn about dog and cat in Python. Here, we don't care the dog. We really create an object called algo2. And that's a really sophisticated, this one line has a lot in it. And in fact, when I ask for the data, it's so elegant because the algo, when it's created, it automatically get the data for that chapter or that section of that chapter. So our life is really nice. When we call algo.data, it's really giving me an object in pandas. 
We haven't studied about panic. That's what we study in machine learning. That's a package that tells me how to organize a table and manipulate a table. Different than NumPy table, which is really mostly for matrices in mathematics. Just to get your curiosity, if I do control B now, why it takes me to this object. By the way, you see it's a different page here. And this one is also inheriting from algo. So when I do control B, it will take me to the true object. It's a huge object, it does a lot of stuff. Every function here, it's huge, has its own stuff. We'll learn about how to break data to trade, train and, and split. Many ways, there is a ways of stratified, many kind of stuff, okay? Each one of them does a lot of other things. Many things we will do a grid or how to run the algorithm. There's a lot of stuff that we learn, but the beauty part of here is we have a basic point, a basic object that has a lot of capability as I run it. So this is, if you recall, this is what we learned. I think we learned already, but we'll re re review that. When we have an object, uh, yeah, we did learn it. This is the constructor of the algo. As it build it up, okay, is doing a lot of stuff in getting the data, but every chapter we have different data. That's why we're inheriting from this algo in chapter two, we inherit from it, but we're, re we're kind of overriding that function. But this is a little more sophisticated of overriding. We did look at that slightly in the Python section, but we will learn what this line means later on in the course. Hey, let's sum up. This is a really good to show you that ever since we study in this course, it's a must know for later on. Otherwise, you'll get stuck later on. Let's go back to our stuff. Okay. We learn how to route in a click from the templ template, how to go to a specific function in the logical layer. And those are really simple one. And this one takes me to the main home a function. This will take me to the index and that's the index. I go to the logical function and there it will render me the index of the video, et cetera, et cetera. That's summarizing the importance of the base one. Now that we finish with the base and the base of every application, we can move on and start being more specific. Okay, I will skip the main, okay, the home. Let's go and look at the Amos page. Okay, let's look at the Amos page. What else can I do? This is, looks boring to me. I think it's 100 times. That's not really what I want. Is that right? So I would like really to do it so that I will look or I get data maybe. Maybe I want to get the data from a database and the database will have several rows and I would like to enumerate the information in the row right in this page, okay? To do that, we already have a good example. Let's follow that example and then we'll come back and do it for the deep billings application. So let me close again the demo so we'll come back to it. Let's close this one as well. Let's close everything. We have an application that I met specifically to demonstrate that sequence from A to Z. And that will be really the main topic of today's session. So let's go into the to-do application. And let's look now at those, the whole uh, flow. The URLs, I have an index, I have only one really way to get into the to-do, it's the index. We don't have extra functions. So that's the only thing this application does. So when I get to here, I will go to the logical function, this one. And this one, let's study. Now it's the time to learn what we have here. But before I start that, I would like to open the model section and why. The model, if you recall, it is the way that I build a table. If you remember, we went over that. 
we said here we define a table in the database using Python. We inheriting from the model class, which is in this package of Django. After we inherit it, we have a lot of things that he knows how to do. So what I ask this one to do is inherit from this class, call the table item, and please add two columns. A, was I right or I was wrong? How many columns is gonna put in this table? Remember guys, what do you say? How many columns will be in this table? I claim three. I wrote only two. One column will be called text. The other one will call dead posted. Let's so one for it. the prime number, no? Which one? One from the prime number. That's right, the primary key, ID. Let's look at it. Let's open the PG admin and look at that database. We have, this is really, the editor to the Postgres we installed. We already did that. We ran the command Python manage py migration and then we did migrate. So that one should have inside it already the table. Okay, let's click here. I should have a database called trades. Here it is. Inside the trades, I should have a schema. Under the schema, I should have tables. Here it is. And under the tables, by the way, pay attention. In the database, it, it names the tables by the application name. To do, it's the application and the item, it's the one we just created. Let's see how many columns there are. Let's view the data. Oh, I have three columns. Text, the one that I defined. That posted as a date. And there's another one. And I said, when we talk, learned about tables and models, I said that what happened in Django is that if you, if you don't put the primary key, it will create it automatically and put it an integer, it will fill it up automatically. So by writing only two columns, in fact, there are three columns, okay? This one, the first one is just a simple text. That's why it's called text file. By the way, pay attention. It, it seems like, you know, you write it, but it's really good that you think as a Python person. What does it really mean here? Models, text field. This is an object, by the way. Text field is an object in Python inside, okay, the models package. This is a model package. Models is a package. Inside this directory or package. So inside this one, I have a class called model, which is for making a table. And inside it, I have a lot of other classes. Another class is making a field, making a column in a table. This is another type of a class in Python. This is making a, another type of a, of, a, of a column. This time it's a date. And it's very interesting. In fact, what I'm doing here is really creating, creating a, a case or creating instance of a text. This will be an instance inside this object. This is an instance of a dead field class. And this one takes different initiating variables. This one takes like auto now, what does that mean? That means that make the table, instructing the table, make the table in such a way that the column that posted, it will be filled automatically at the time of creation, okay? And we will see there is a three times. There is also now add, and, and which is every time when the moments you edit, this one is every time you're updating 
it will update it. Okay, every time I will make a change to the text, it will update also the date. Okay, but we'll, we'll focus on that later on. But that's very important just to realize we're using really Python. That's the beauty. And the Python helped me controlling how the database will be created. And that's the way when we get to here, it's really creating a table in the database the way I want it. In fact, the one that does really the work and putting the data here, it's the database. It's not Python anymore. The creation is done by Python, but after it's being created, the database is handling it. Same things about this column. This is a primary key. It's being created by Python, but who handling it is really the database itself. Okay, nice. So the only column that really I'm gonna put data in, it's the middle one, which called text. So now that I have a table, I'm sorry. Now that I have a table and Python is really nice to me that I can manipulate and get data, put data, update, right from Python, I don't have to use SQL. And that's make life much, much easier. Now that I have a table, let's see what do we do in the view. And see the way it's written. By the way, the function index, this is the one we put here. If you see, when we get to this row, it takes me to this function. And this function is not just a regular function. It has an input called request. Django does all the work behind the screen packaging a lot of information and putting it in a class called request. And that class has a lot of information. For example, there is one variable of this class request called method. And what does it really mean? When I am calling something, let's close this one, we don't need it anymore. When I put something here, Okay, this is when I do enter, it will get, it is really going and getting to that function, the method is get. When I'm posting information, we'll get to that later on. Let me close this one as well. Let me go back to here. I got to the to do. Now when I click, it is a get method. Okay, I got to the page. A sending this exactly the address to get to this page. Now, what is this page? How that created? It's a get method. So when you get a get method, it is not really the post. So this one is irrelevant. We'll get back and we'll make clearer in a second. Let's ignore that for a second. By the way, if you want to convince you, I will delete that code. You will see it will work. Let me just restart the server. I have to start it when I change the code. Let's refresh. Let me delete that one and I will refresh. You see, I won't get an error. I'll click to do. It got me to the same place, no error. Hey, that code unnecessary? Oh, it's very necessary. That code is very necessary. Okay, but now it is only a get method. Just to another way to see it. How about we will uh, do a print and we'll see which method being called. So let's put that one inside the print. Okay. And let's see, you know, just to so we know we'll find it easily. That's the way many times I do, just for convenience and laziness. But I'll put it here and you will see. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's say I run it again, run the server again, go back and let's do refresh. Okay, I'm sending again the get request. Let's see what it says here in the bottom. It, it should say, it should say get. You see that? It's a get method. 
So if it is a get method, this one will be skip. Okay, it will jump on it. Okay, it will get right to here. And this line looks so naive, but it does a hell of a lot of work for us. It goes to the item object, but here, one second in Python, I cannot use an object unless I bring it here on the top. So I say form, let me write it again. So I will appreciate the way it's done. I will do form. And where do I want to bring it from? I want to bring it from this page, okay? From this file. So I will do this directory because the view is also in the same directory. And here it's give me, give me all the files in here or directories. So models is one of them. Import, what do I want him to import? I want him to import a class called item. And in fact, we do have a class item inside the models. I have this item inside that model so I can import it. Okay, now that I have it, by the way, if you have more than one, it's common to put a parenthesis. Okay, but I don't really have to. Okay, I put item. Now that I have the item, this is representing the table itself. So I tell him, please go to the database, bring all the rows from that database. So in another word, these items, it's really an object that have all the rows inside the item table. Here I put a counter, let's ignore that for now. We don't really care about it for now. And the only thing is really, and also ignore all this part, you can ignore it for now. Okay, let's, you know what, let me take it out for now. Just not to confuse you, not crucial. Okay, so I'm asking him, give me all the record from that table. And what I want you to do after you give me all the record, what do I want him to do? Please render this index again. And what, before you render, take this one as a variable and do whatever you need to do inside. So let's see what it does inside here. Okay, if you notice today we're combining everything we learned. Okay, so I'm opening this template called index and before I'm rendering it to the user, I'm going to do something with all the rows from the database. Okay, so I'm going back to the to do templates. Here is the index. I will do double click. Here is the, in the, in the template. It's inheriting from to do. That's common because all the pages in this template I'm going to extend from here. This is stuff of the navigation, I don't really care. I wanna focus on what I do right in here. This is the important part, okay? And I'm gonna erase this one, this is garbage. It's about time to remove it, okay? But I have here, very interesting, some code which is easy. And let me erase also the counter, I don't need that part. I will erase all the stuff we don't really need for the important parts. I will erase remove all of that. It's all very important for the point and very detailed that we will deal with later on. What important here is that I'm putting, okay, I have an input button. We didn't talk about input button in a second when we talk. There's another button input called submit. We haven't talked about this section at all. We'll talk about it in a second. But let's ignore that one for a second. I, I will even erase it, okay? I, I, I will bring it back. This is very important, I will come bring it back. I just wanna focus first on this part. What this one does, we learn a for loop in Python. This is not Python, this is Jinja. It does a for loop for item in items. Remember items, it is what I transfer from the logical layer as an items here. I just named it the same as I named this one. I don't really have to, okay? But I, you know, if I change this one underscore, that means in Python is items underscore, I'm transferring it to the 
template, but the name in the template will be items. That will work just fine. I just call it in Python items underscore in the template it's items. So here when I go here, I have an object called items. I can loop and then loop in Jinja, it's you write it this way and you close it with N4. It means the four is from here to here and it will do everything inside. So it's gonna do every, for every row, it's going to do what is inside. What does it do? H, you remember that H is emphasizing. We had H1, two, three, four, it's a little smaller letter, but I can put one, it will make it a big letter. Class we skipped, that has to do with uh, uh, styling. We won't focus on that one. Strong mean bolded, that's also HTML. That's mean bold. You could have even used B. The letter B will do the same. This is emphasizing, but the most important thing is this part. This is the important. This is, looks a little familiar. Every row will have, we have a column called text. So I'm putting here the text of that row and I'm putting the date of that row. So I'm looping over all the rows and I'm putting the text and I'm putting the date in which it is posted. So I'm taking really those two columns. I'm ignoring, by the way, the ID. How, how can I put the ID, by the way, if I really wanted to edit? I would have added the ID too. So I can go here, is that right? I put a dash here and put here item dot ID. That will give me the ID of that row. So the printout should be now, instead of just the text and the date, I will have also the ID of that row. Let's try it. Okay, let's try it. Let's just make sure the server run. Yeah, the server run. Okay, let's refresh. Here we go, very nice. Hey, I deleted all the top, remember? Now I got the, I got the ID, I got that part, and that really, like the example I did in Amos template, but this time it's really much nicer. I'm getting the data right from the database. This is coming really from, sorry, this is coming really from the database. I'm looping over the rows. Let's, I'm, uh, I should really have closed that one. We will see, in fact, in here, in fact, if you see, in this table, we have already three rows. And those are already the rows that we see. See, one, two, three, this is the index. I have the text, it shows me the text, and here it gives me the date. And in minutes we'll add more rows, and with that we'll finish the session for today. Let's bring back what I delivered before. And I said it's very, so this part, it's just showing me the information from a table. How did I do it? In the view, the logical layer, I used, I used the object item, which is defined in the model, I use that object. That object is a very smart one because it's inheriting from the class model. I pull all the data because the item has an object called objects and it has a function that can pull all the data. We'll learn later on how you can filter it. You can filter, don't bring me all of them, just bring me some that has some specific rules and it will give me only those rows. For now, I'm calling for all of them. So I get all of them, transfer it to the template. Inside the template, I do a for loop, and it loops all of them, and it gives me all of them. By the way, as a good exercise, how would you turn it to a table? Okay, it would be very easy. Turning it to a table would be just very, very simple. You know, I would put the tag of a, temple, a table outside the loop, and inside the loop, I'll put the TR inside, and each one of those will get a TD 
and I will have a table. We'll do it in a second. But first of all, and that's the most important things for today, more than really how to design a nice, tab a nice template, it's really how it works. Let me put this one back. This one, a very special things. There is something called form. This is HTML. When I put the action empty, it will say when you're posting or when you're sending, send it to the same place it come from. I will explain what I mean by that in a second. But before I will repeat and I will explain what I just said now, which is not supposed to be really that clear, I have a method called post. You notice that? That's very important. That looks familiar now. If you look at the view, here in this part, we have the post. So when I will activate this part, in fact, it will go back to the same function, meaning it will go really back to the same place here. And from here, it will go into here. And when it gets here, the request, the method in the request will be post this time. When it get to the post, it will do something else before it will get to this. This one it will do anyway. Doesn't matter if it was get or not. But before it will bring me all the data, it will do this one. And what does it do here? And that's really the crucial one. And that's where we will conclude our session, finish it. So it'll take us about five to 10 minutes because it's really important. Okay, extremely important. How do I create, let me ref refresh this page. You see, we're getting here this part and I'm getting this one and I'm getting this one. I kind of erased also the image, which could have been nice. Let me see if I can get that one. I think that I erased that. One sec. Uh, let me see if, no, not this one. That doesn't make a difference. I need it here and here. Let me see if I, Yeah, let me put back the picture. I, I will erase the counter because I don't really need the counter, but I did want to put a picture here just for nice, okay? This one I removed the index and we don't really have to have it. And let's put it back again. I know, it will be very simple to do. Put the dash and this one I will change to ID and that would be just fine. Okay, let's refresh it again. And what do we see now? We have a nice picture here. We have a place to put information and we have a button when we click on it. Let's see what do we see, how do we see that? First of all, the picture. The picture is really cool. Here I utilize, we're not gonna go over it today, some other session. Uh, I put an image, if you recall, we learned that last time, how to put an image. The only difference here that I put an image that is really sitting on Amazon Web Services. So this is the link to that image. If you go outside of here and you go to a browser, this is really going to Amazon Web Services. It's like an HTML if you see that. Bingo, here it is, this is the image. It's sitting on Amazon bucket, okay? But that's belong to another session. I just bring you a picture from somewhere. That's the only important things. When I bring that picture, I, to present it here, all what I need to do is put it in an image syntax of HTML and source, it tells me where to take it from. So first thing is I'm just putting a nice picture just for fun, okay? That's less important for us. More important is really these lines. From, it's a form that this part has two elements, has an input, a regular data entry I can type into it stuff. So if you look at this line, it's an HTML to put a place to type into it. 
say enter a message. This one, it's part of here that I'm writing instruction to the user, place holder means give this as a hint to the user. Not crucial, find that it's not crucial. What's really important is that I have a name or ID, a name, it tells me the name of the input. When I'm entering the data, eventually, this one is going to end up in the view part. It's going to end up in the view part. And I will explain that in a second, okay? The second part is submit the button. It doesn't even have a name. That means I don't really care about, the only things I need is to click. And this one is a very special because it's a type submit. It's like sending the information inside this form to the server. And the method you send it, it's a post. One more time. Here I have a form. The truth of the matter inside this form, I have only one data entry component. This one. This is the data entry. This is, I want to send to the server whatever the user is typing. And what I'm sending it to, it will be in a method called post. Post is really sending. There is other one, get, post, pull. I won't get into them. Two more major one is get and post. The rest of them are detailed. Most likely you won't use them. Process means send it to. And how do I send it? With this button. So when I click this one, this one is being sent to the same place this page came from, meaning it's going to go back to, it's going to go back to this eventually this file. So I'm checking if it's a post. Let's just remove it. We don't need it anymore. Let's leave it. It will get here. The method is post. So what do I do now? The request have also another list. It's really a dictionary. The request has a dictionary with all the 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 the, the inputs that the user is typing in. Here we have this one. What is it? Uh, here we go. This one, it's this one. And the name of it is item text. So this one, it's very important to put right. Because this is will hold the information the user will type. So let's do it. That would be really cool. Let's go to the view. And let's see if I, yeah, I am printing this one, by the way. And that's good for demonstration purposes. Let's just put again. Uh, a print just around it so you can identify it. Let's uh, call this one two. Okay. And I will put it here. So what this one will show me is whatever the user have typed, it will come back to this function and uh, the request will hold it inside the dictionary called post and the name of that component is item text exactly as it's written here. So after I get that information, I would like to put it inside the table items. And the way I do it, this one we saw before, it's reading all the rows. This one, object is the same one as I'm using here, but this time object has another function called create. The create, is going to create a new row in the database. And what is it going to put inside? In the column text, it's going to put exactly what the user have typed. And that will add another row. Let's do it and analyze it, and that will be for today. Okay, let's go back here and refresh. And I'm going to type, okay, this is a test to enter data to a data table item, items. Now, when I click here, say I type, nothing really happened yet. When I click here, it's gonna send the form. The form, it means this part. That's the important part. It's gonna send it to the server, the logical layer. So the click here, 
will bring me again to here. And here I will start analyzing. So let's click it. I clicked. Oh, something happened. Oh, and I got it back here too. So two things happened. And let's look at it. Let's analyze it. We got the, when I click the button, it is a post. And how do I know it is a post? You see, here it says post. You see, in the bottom. One, one, I intentionally put number one, so I know exactly the method was post. That means I click the button submit. After that, okay, it's a post. I see what the user typed. I can see it here. This is the test for this line. It's really printed because I wrote a print here. I printed two and two so I can know exactly what it is. So this is just for me. I don't really need it for the functioning of this function. I can even delete it. In real life, I really shouldn't put it. This is really the only things I would put there. After, if it is a post, I'm going to create a new row inside the database. So this line making a new row inside the database and putting inside the text column is going to put whatever the user have written. Let's see if I'm right or not. Let's go to the database. Let's refresh this table. Is that right? Refresh it. Here we go. A new line. That's pretty cool. It put a new date. If you notice, today's date. That's the time that I just updated, meaning all I created in this case. And this is the text. It put the text. When I put this text, those two automatically filled up. That's the way I created this table. I told him, make it a primary key. Inside the primary key, it fills up the numbers automatically. Here, it fills up the date automatically according to the time I updated this table. So I got a new date. This is the date. Beautiful. Now let's look at what we saw so here. After I updated, now how that one printed. This one we know already. After, after creating the table, adding another row, we ask him, now after you edit the row, please put everything inside. Now he has four rows. So he's putting four rows, sending it to the template, and the template does its stuff. It's creating in this section. It's creating in this section. It, it does a four loop four times and put all the four rows. And therefore, I'm getting this page nicely. I have a place to put info, and after you put it in, it will put it right into here. Let's do one more time. Last example. Example and submit. Bingo. Very nice. He put it in the database and pull everything again. Okay? And that's the way we close this cycle. If you notice, by the way, the beauty of this so simple example, it's everything that we will do from now on would be much more sophisticated, but the concepts are the same. We will have always a presentation layer. We'll be able to put data. We'll be able to click on something to happen. It will go to the logical layer. The logical layer will get to a function. The function will do whatever needs to be done. In this example, it's putting the data in the data set, in the, in the table. And after that, it's putting everything. And then it's, prepare, uh, it's preparing, rendering a new template to the user. It's rendering again this one, and this template takes all the data and prepare a new output. And that's closing the cycle. That's what I call closing the cycle. You can look at, with that we'll finish, just the last example, in the example of this one. If you notice, this is really very complex example, but this is the logical layer. If you look at the uh, get data, okay, we end up here, we do a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot of, and then we have the render function. Here it is, but this one is a little more complicated. But the basic is the same. It get the request, you see that? And it has which template to send. 
This is the template it's going to send. It's a little more sophisticated. There, it's no coincidence I'm putting underscore under that because here I'm using a, what it's called Ajax. It's a little more advanced, but the concept is very similar. I'm sending a template, but before the template is being rendered, is getting all that information. The template will be using it, creating the template, and then it will send it to the user. So all the logic that we use in this simple example repeat itself over and over, and every other example, the only thing is, now that we know, we can focus on the actual work. How to render it, we already know, okay? And we'll learn a little bit more as we go along. By the way, this is a very interesting, by the way, this is a, a data frame of Panda's data frame, which is a table. I'm sending this table to the template, and then I'm asking the template, please print it. And the beautiful thing is that Django is very smart and make a special function, how to take a table and turn it to HTML automatically so you don't have to worry about it. This one, I'm getting some statistics about the data set housing. And it's nice that here we will describe and we'll show how you can present it nicely. And by the way, this is also it's turning it into a data frame, and data frame is very easy to present. But that's for later on when we get to machine learning. But the concept, it's very similar. So when we get to this session in machine learning course, that should be familiar. Shouldn't be really like starting from scratch, okay? Okay, thank you. I think this is good. Let's just uh, say goodbye nicely. I think uh, today is a turning point in a sense we, we have seen the most uh, basic, basic, couldn't be more basic application to, to do in which we have data entry screen. We push a button, it goes to the server, goes to the logical layer. The logical layer get the information, connect to the database, put the data as a new row in the database, then it's calling all the data from the same table and call the template, transfer that one to the template, and then we just showing the data in the same template. That's really, I would say, turning point in this course. I mean, we were aiming to get to that point. Later on, we're going to make more sophisticated stuff. We enhance what we did so far in putting more functionality, learning a little bit the GUI, how to make it more sophisticated, nicer, add more functionalities, etc., etc. So what I recommend for next session is that we, the next session will be a working session. What do I mean by that? You, Liam, and you, Hanoch, you start building up the application deep billings. I gave you the command, Python manage py start app, and then I call it deep billings. That's created the application. I moved it to the application, and then I created the URLs and all the links. Most likely you will forget stuff. And I believe even if you know, when you do it, you always forget something. And that could be really excellent exercise before the next session. Because the following section, I would like to build up a table in which you can add a new row, you can add delete row, you can update a row, all the four major function you can do in a database. It's by the way, it's known as a crude. It's known as a crude in a database. It's four function you can do in a table. C, it's for entering new row. R, it's retrieve. It's selecting or retrieve, pulling a, a row. Update, it's updating a, a row. And D, it's for deleting a row. Those are the four major functions you most likely will do with a table. 
So we will exercise them in the next following sections. But before we continue, I think it's time to stop and start exercising. And the first exercise is doing whatever I did in the previous five sections plus today's session and build up the deep billings exactly the way I did it and stop there. And then whatever we learn today from the to-do, we will implement a little more elaborated in the deep billings application.